Tired of your nail polish chipping? Get ready for a manicure that stays for days with Sally Hansen's Miracle Gel. Up to eight days of color and shine in two simple steps. Step one, apply Sally Hansen Miracle Gel Polish. Step two, lock in your manicure with a Miracle Gel Top Coat. No UV light needed. Get a mani that works as hard as you do with Sally Hansen's Miracle Gel. Available in over 70 shades. Avoid upfront fees that cripple businesses with IBM Cloud. Bare Metal on IBM Cloud rents out dedicated servers by the hour or month. Customize over 11 million different configurations. Deploy on demand. Get unlimited inbound bandwidth, plus 24-7 support, and 20 terabytes of outbound bandwidth cost-free. And when's the last time you checked IBM Cloud bare metal prices? They're now more comparable than ever. The better bare metal is IBM Cloud. Visit ibm.biz slash bare metal servers today and see for yourself. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 448. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the program. We're going to jump right into it tonight. We have an article from the the U.S. Sun, and they have an exclusive with Spencer Coven, who is lawyer to nine of the alleged survivors of Jeffrey Epstein. And he has some pretty interesting things to say. So let's jump into this article from the U.S. Sun and see what Emma Perry has to say. Headline. Will she survive? Ghislaine Maxwell likely to cut plea deal, but may face same fate as Epstein if his powerful pals find out. Pretty ominous, right? And it goes right into the the whole vein of the cloud of suspicion hanging over Epstein's death. If the government would just come out with some conclusive proof, concrete proof of what occurred in that jail cell like they should have done a long time ago. I mean, we don't live in some sort of uh, society where things are supposed to be hidden from the public, right? If something's gruesome, if there was uh, such a, a, a malfunction of the way things are supposed to go inside of this jail that a high-level inmate like Epstein ended up dead because of the uh, lack of ability of the staff, then we need to know that. Or, in turn, if it was something more ominous, if somebody got, had, got access to Epstein and maybe saw, saw to him, right? Helped, out, helped him on his way. See, the point is, we just don't know. And it comes down to a trust issue, right? Do you trust what the federal government and people like Darth Barr have to say? Or do you want some evidence to go along with their narrative? And I think, especially in this case, after all of the BS that has been dealt downriver by the federal government, that people are well within their rights to question what the hell's going on as far as Jeffrey Epstein dying in that jail cell. And it just lends credibility to it when you have one of the lawyers for nine of the survivors saying the same thing. But, like I've always said about that situation, I do not believe the official narrative, point blank period. Now, I'm not saying that he couldn't have killed himself. It's very possible that he did. But the evidence certainly is not concrete. There's nothing that they have provided to make me sit down and say, oh, okay, here's, here's where we're at. All right, this looks, this is, this is what they're talking about. There's none of that. In fact, we have the opposite. Other experts coming out, going on record, challenging what the, uh, the state found. So, you know, it is just another example of the federal government thumbing their nose at everybody and thinking that they are above the law, which in reality, they're not. Ghislaine Maxwell is likely to be negotiating a plea deal with prosecutors, which is why her trial has been delayed, a survivor's lawyer has claimed. Spencer Coven, who represents nine Epstein survivors, also believes that she may meet the same fate as the billionaire pe- uh, pedophile who died in jail in 2019. Look, that shit is, that's an ominous statement from a lawyer, right? And it's 
sad to even think or say that somebody in the custody of the United States government, we'd even have to have this conversation about their safety. Somebody who's in solitary confinement and who is away from the general population, there should be none of these questions whatsoever, folks. You mean to tell me we can't safeguard one person to where there's nobody else with access to them besides people who are workers for the facility? And if something happens while she's in their care, well, there needs to be a reckoning, right? But nobody who who is not working directly in that wing of the cell or that part of the jail or whatever should have access to her anyway. And that's what I talked about from the jump when they were talking about how uh, these are restrictive rights being placed upon Ghislaine Maxwell. She shouldn't be in solitary confinement. Oh, no? Really? Because... She is right to be fearful of her safety in general population. And as much as I dislike the lady, I don't want to see anything happen to her. I want her to face justice, right? As of right now, she's innocent until she's proven guilty. So I want to see her get her trial, face down her accusers, and then I want to see her be convicted and her accusers able to move on with their lives. That's what I want. I don't want to see her get hurt in jail or be uh, put into some kind of like, uh, you know, dungeon cell or anything like that. That's just, that. that's not how I roll when it comes to situations like this. One of my biggest problems is the way the federal government treats people while they're detained. And in any other circumstance... I'd probably be pining and saying that, look, this is overly restrictive and blah, 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 blah. But in this case, when it comes to somebody like Maxwell with all of this power, all of this wealth, and all of this obvious money that's coming from who knows where, well, she is not like the rest of us, right? Who gets smashed and smothered underneath the boot heel of the system. We can't fight back the way she does. And that's what I advocate for. Regular people, normal folks, who are getting smashed by the boot heel of the system. And if Maxwell's lawyers were honest, and that's truly what they were about, and they were pushing for that way before this whole entire case came around, they probably would have more sympathetic ears listening to them. But the fact of the matter is, everybody knows that they're pushing a bunch of garbage We all know that the system's screwed up. We all know that jail is not a good, pleasant place to be. But also, this is not the case where we're going to argue that, right? And we're going to fix it here right now because of Ghislaine. Sorry, that's not going to occur. Ghislaine Maxwell is going to prison if she's convicted. And she's going to get a real heaping taste of what everybody else with no money has to look forward to when they face the federal government. Earlier this week, a judge agreed to Maxwell's request that the trial, which was due to start in July, is put back until the end of the year after the prosecution added more charges. Maxwell, 59, denies all wrongdoing and has pleaded not guilty to sex trafficking and other charges over her alleged role in procuring four teenage girls for former lover co-conspirator, Epstein to abuse between 1994 and 2004. And we know that Maxwell and her team has been in overdrive looking to obfuscate, looking to muddy the waters, looking to stretch this out. And could this possibly be the strategy? They're trying to lengthen, uh, make this a little bit longer, lengthen it out a bit so that they have uh, more room to whip up a deal. Now, if that's the case, and they're talking about a plea deal, whipping up a deal of some sort, what could she possibly be offering the federal government that would make them bite? Because as of right now, they have themselves a pretty big fish with Maxwell. So they're going to have to go higher up the chart there and get a gigantic catch. Or else there's no way they're going to work a deal out with her. But it would make sense, right, that in this extra period that they have, that they're working more to find out what's going on as far as a deal for Maxwell. That said, what about her underlings? 
Are they cutting deals right now? What about the core four? Are they cutting deals right now? Are they looking to pin more on Maxwell to wiggle themselves off of hooks? We don't know what's going on. We don't know about the sealed indictments within the grand jury. That's all speculation one way or the other. But I will tell you this much. Ghislaine Maxwell is going to have a lot more time to sit around in that cell and stew on things. And if she has somebody to give up, oh, I guarantee she's willing to talk. However, Coven speculates that there's a high likelihood that the delay is because Maxwell is negotiating a plea deal in which she would hand over incriminating evidence on Epstein's powerful pals to avoid a public trial and get a shorter sentence. This is a likelihood, folks. We've talked about that before, right? We know that in the American justice system, this is what happens. People get rolled, people turn over, they flip on their friends, they flip on their associates, and if you have somebody higher up the chain to feed to these investigators, all the better. So if Maxwell has something, something tangible, something where the prosecutors feel like they can, you know, really dig their teeth in, perhaps Maxwell is making a deal. Now, I highly doubt whatever that deal is, it would end up in no jail time for her. I, I'm, I'm racking my brain trying to figure out who she'd be giving up. Now, there's a bevy of people, right? I mean, we can speculate about a bunch of people. Les Wexner, we can talk about Bill Clinton, we can talk about Trump, we can talk, I mean, insert rich jerk off here, right? So it could be a bunch of people that she's looking to spill the beans on. But my question is, what does she have that is tangible enough and worth enough for the federal government to trade her carcass for a different pound of meat. That's what we have to ask ourselves. And now, obviously, Spencer Coven is much more locked in to the case than I am. Hell, the guy's representing nine of the survivors. I'm just some clown sitting around commentating on the case, right? But I think that it is one of those situations where it's possible that she is pleading out and she's talking about a deal. But I just don't know what she could be giving up. Unless, of course, look... Here's something that I wouldn't expect, right? And I highly doubt this will be the case. But if she has financial records and financial statements that can tie people like Leon Black and the other rich scumbags to Jeffrey Epstein financially, this could end up being one of the most insane cases in the history of the world. Because every single person that funneled money through one of Jeffrey Epstein's offshores or one of these accounts was engaging in some form of money laundering, some form of wire fraud, and the money that was gained off of that, well, those are ill-gotten gains, and that money should all be frozen. So if she has that kind of stuff, those kind of receipts... And the federal government wants to really go hard in the paint? Yeah, I know, big joke, right? Well, that is definitely an avenue for it. And I've said it from the beginning. If you want to get people like Wexner, you want to get people like Leon Black, all of these other big shots, there is only one way to do it, folks, and that is financially. Just take a look at how they get all of the kingpins. Oh, there's drug trafficking charges, of course, but it's the money laundering that they get all of these people on. Those are the hold'em charges. And then once those charges have teeth, they become a lot more than that. So all of these dudes that were engaging in financial interest businesses with Jeffrey Epstein, if if, if the government really wanted to go hard in the pain here and really let the horses out of the stable... They have a path to victory, but it's unfortunate that our government is populated with a bunch of jerk-offs from the financial sector. So why would they ever go after their friends? Initially, I'm not surprised by the delay in criminal proceedings by a case as complex as, as, as this especially one. Where additional people were added to the claims later on, that you would get a continuance of a trial date, Coven told the son. And we've talked about that as well, right? This is a very complex case. A lot of stuff um, intermingled, a lot of different information coming in from decades and decades, a lot to sort out. So I'm not shocked that it got pushed back. Not happy about it, right? But that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is this case is being pushed back. Having said that, I think there's a high likelihood, given the delay, 
that what is going on behind the scenes is that they are probably discussing the negotiation of a deal, and ultimately, she will never end up in front of a jury, and she will cut a deal. That would be horrible, right? I can't even imagine. And who could possibly be worth it up the chain that they could get the goods on that they would cut bait on Maxwell? That would be a PR nightmare for the federal government. Look, you can get away with cutting a deal with Sammy the Bull Gravano. Hell, he only killed 18 people. You can't get away with cutting a deal with people who touch and abuse children. I think that there's enough people left in the country that are, you know, not brain dead, that that's not going to fly. So I don't know about that part of it. I mean, never in front of a jury. I, you know, she has to do jail time no matter what. And not five years either. If she feeds, if she feeds the federal government people like Leon Black and, and Les Wexner and all of that, cool. She should still do 15 or 20. Point blank, period. And if she's not okay with doing 20 still, no matter what, fine. Then you, you go up for the full 85 or whatever the hell it's going to be when all is said and done. And you face all of them charges. But the thought of her not getting any penalty for this or getting off the hook because of a plea deal literally makes me sick to my stomach. The question then becomes if, it's, if the powerful people that don't want her to cut a deal learn about the deal before it's decided and before she is convicted, will she ultimately survive that deal? These are some pretty uh, in, in, you know, inflammable words by Spencer Coven here. But it's something that needs to be talked about, right? He has the courage to say it. Where's the, fe- where's the, the legacy media coming out and saying this? And it's not like you're just pulling it out of the air. We just went through the whole Epstein escapade. The fact that the federal government thought it was a good idea to put him in a jail cell with Tartaglioni. And then the whole debacle that followed. So yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a, a, a good question. Would she survive cutting a plea deal? Because in any deal she cuts, it would have to include jail time. I don't think there's any way that the U.S. Attorney's Office could save face in this matter unless there was jail time attached. Bingo. 100%. So I'm glad Spencer Coven said that as well because there's no logical person on this planet that would accept the fact that she ratted on her friends but she still abused these kids and now she's going to get off scot-free? No freaking way. No way, no how. I'm not big on the whole protest type of thing, Right? But that's the kind of shit that would get your boy out in the streets. If she's in jail and part of her deal is to turn evidence over against powerful people, she's aware that that might also be prosecuted. Then, I think, that there ultimately would be a high likelihood that something untoward would happen. I believe it's likely that if she ends up with jail time, that she could meet the same fate as Jeffrey Epstein. Now, look, I've said that for, from the beginning. If she's put into a uh, general population, folks, come on. It would not be pretty. That's why I called her legal team's bluff on that shit from the jump. Don't talk stupid. Don't talk out of the side of your neck. We're talking about your client's life. And once again, Ghislaine Maxwell, breaking news, not my favorite person on the planet. That doesn't mean I want to see her harmed. I want to see her face justice. That's what I want. So the whole general population nonsense was garbage from the jump. And they should be ashamed of themselves for even floating that shit to try and muddy the waters. Nobody on this... It's okay if you're wondering how the COVID-19 vaccine got here so fast. It was record time after all. And when you're ready, here's your answer. No steps were skipped. No shortcuts were taken. Years of research and determination paid off. Let's get you there. Let's get to immunity. Learn more at vaccinateall58.com or call 833-422-4255. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Earth thinks it's a good idea for Maxwell to be put in general population. Coven believes Maxwell may have damaging information that could implicate powerful men all over the world. Ghislaine has information dating back over 20 plus years with respect to not just Epstein, but others in the circle that Epstein brought into the organization. 
So it's going to involve powerful men in the United States, the United Kingdom, and in other countries too, he alleged. We know that. We know that this is not a conspiracy theory. We know that this is a a, a criminal conspiracy that ranges across international lines, international borders, continents, all the way from Asia back to America. And we know that some of the most powerful, most well-connected people in the world are connected to this shit. And your legacy media is still rambling on about nonsense. I made the mistake of flipping through the channels a little while ago, and they have like this uh, this this news channel now on uh, DirecTV where it's all the different news stations at once with some of the talking heads yapping. They've been talking about the same shit for like four or five years. All they talk about is this side bad, that side bad. Oh, tribe good. Oh, tribe bad. Oh, 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 oh. So stupid. So dumb. And the people that sit around and poison their minds listening to that stuff, I, you guys got to break away from it. You got to break away from it. That oblong box is not doing you any favors. We know from reading Epstein's little black book that he had strong connections with powerful people all over the world. And not only that, when you're brazen enough to have a picture of an ex-president, I'm looking at you, Slick Willie, on your wall of that man, painted in a dress, some pumps, looking like a complete cuck, yeah, it's safe to say you got some squeeze, bro. Safe to say you might have some pull. At the end of the day, Ghislaine is in the photograph that had been widely uh, uh, circulated with one known accuser, Virginia Roberts, and Prince Andrew in it. So, she's a direct witness to that photo. She could at least verify the the validity of it. Prince Andrew has denied any misconduct. And that's a good point, right? She should be able to, um, one way or the other, say if that that, uh, picture is authentic or not, and if she lies under oath... More perjury. Because guess what? At this point, charge her with everything. The same way that I've seen people get charged with 100 counts of RICO. That's right, you heard that right. 100 counts of RICO and only one stuck, by the way. Let's see Maxwell get some of that, a little taste of that as well. Coven has previously questioned the official version of events around Epstein's death, which was recorded as suicide. The problem I have is in order to believe the official story, you would have to believe two things. Either that the federal government and the Department of Justice had a massive failure of its systems, he said, which I highly doubt. It just happened to be for that one that one day, that one jail cell, that one moment in time, all of this stuff happened at once, huh? Pretty big coincidence, folks. Pretty damn big. And coincidentally... All at the same time, there was a failure of surveillance cameras, human oversight, the two guards falling asleep, a failure of checks and balances. So either there's this massive series of failures, or something else happened, and that something else can only be that someone was allowed in, or people were looking the other way, so he could be taken out. And that's really point blank period, right? Right to the point in the heart of the matter. Can't disagree with anything Coven says right there. I mean, the way they explained it and the way the legacy media sopped it up is laughable at best. Where's all the hard-hitting investigative journalists digging deep into this case? Anybody working sources besides the independent media here, folks? Anybody? I mean, you you got outlets like the Daily Beast doing a good job, but... Where's all the, 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 the big papers of record? Oh, the New York Times, the Gray Lady, the Washington Post. Give me a break already. Is it not clear that these people don't care? Because this whole entire situation should have been on blast like it's nobody's business. It would be awful if they allowed the same circumstances to occur to Maxwell that happened to Epstein, and I'm hoping under the new administration, additional protections have been put in place to prevent such an action to occur. Well, 
hope in one hand and you know what else in the other, pal. Because I have, let me be very clear, I have zero faith in this administration to do anything about this situation. Just like the last, what, four administrations, five administrations didn't care. Coven says he still hopes to see Maxwell face trial and finally get some justice for survivors in the case who he says have been repeatedly denied justice. The clients I represent want a full accounting in an open court of all the evidence against this woman so that she can stop claiming innocence and stop claiming she is being victimized by all this. It's absurd, Coven alleged. Her part was so integral in all this, she was a ringleader in the entire affair. Oh, well. Nice to see somebody else going out on record and saying that, because that's what these girls alleged, right? And after looking at all of the evidence, looking at all of the statements made that that have been made public by the survivors, it's rather obvious to me that Ghislaine Maxwell wasn't some shrinking violet, wasn't just along for the ride. She was driving the car. Multiple women can account for what occurred, and a few of my clients say she was directly an abuser that she engaged in some of the abusive acts with Epstein. So she's not just an organizer, but an abuser as well. Bingo, 100%. There's levels to this shit. Enabler, abuser, friend, fellow traveler. And all of these people who were in, who were in Epstein's orbit are one or the other. I don't wish death on anyone. In fact, I wish that she gets her day in court so the public can hear a full accounting of what she did. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think ultimately she's going to cut a deal, especially with the continuance. They want to buy time to cut a deal and try to find out what information she has that can assist them. Look, I I can't disagree with that. I'm not saying I want that to happen, folks. Believe me, I want Maxwell to face the full boot of the justice system. But we have to be realistic about things and we have to understand how the federal government operates. If they feel like they can get a bigger fish, they will get into bed with Maxwell. The same way they did with Sammy the Bull. The same way they did with El Mayo, one of the leaders of the Sinaloa cartel's son. Look, this this is how it works. So I, I, I see what Spencer Coven is talking about here. But she's been in custody for quite some time. I mean, you would think that she would already have made a proffer statement, right? Maybe she's held out. Maybe she was trying to see where the lay of the land was after the arraignment, the bail situation. And now maybe her last resort will be to f- cop in a deal. Maxwell was seen with a black eye in the first photo released by the court since her arrest, but claims she doesn't know how she got it. She also says she is being held in restrictive conditions in prison, including guards sticking their fingers in her mouth and shining torches in her face every 15 minutes, according to a support website set up by her brothers. A support website. I wonder if the person who is the administrator over there is a bit drunk lately, too. Have you seen some of the -the off-the-wall nonsense? Boy, oh boy. In the site's FAQ section, it claims, the drinking water is full of contaminants and the food is inedible. Inedible, huh? To who? Rich people like you? Because I'm I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people all over the world that would love to have whatever slop that jail is serving up. So while we might find it gross, inedible? Eh, that's not the truth. Maxwell's used to the best in life, folks. She's used to the high-flying, limo-driving, caviar-eating, crab-popping lifestyle. Well, that is a thing of the past. And in life, we just have to accept sometimes that the circumstances have changed. Coven hit back at the claims, saying he has no sympathy for Maxwell, and she deserves everything she gets. I can't disagree with that either, Mr. Coven. The website set up by Maxwell's brother to defend her is just disgusting, he said. There are so many women who have stepped forward that have been able to verify what they lived through and what Maxwell did and her part in this entire scheme. And for her brothers to completely look the other way and ignore their sister's culpability in this entire action and plead for some kind of sympathy for Maxwell on behalf of the victims is just disgusting. She deserves everything she gets. Can I get an amen, and can the people in the back get up and repeat it? She deserves everything she gets. I agree. 
The fact that she's uncomfortable in jail, that gets a big who cares from me. Jail is supposed to be miserable and uncomfortable, and I'm glad they are making it miserable and uncomfortable for her based on what she's done. The fact she may have a black eye, I could care less. She deserves everything she gets. There's a special place in hell for people that abuse young girls. <laughs> it's coming with straight fire, folks. Spencer Coven coming out hot out of the gate. Maxwell was denied bail again by the New York judge during the latest hearing, the fourth time since her arrest that she could be that has been kept behind bars. She could face an 80-year sentence if convicted. The son reached out to a lawyer for Maxwell and the lawyer for the Maxwell family for comment. Of course they didn't bite. They never do. But I'll, I'll tell you what, Spencer Coven ain't he's not pulling any punches here, right? Coming out firing. So, quick recap, Spencer Coven Attorney for nine of the survivors has said that he believes that this whole entire delay is part of a plan to get Maxwell involved in a plea deal. Now, what that plea deal will look like is anyone's guess, if it occurs, right? We have to, obviously, this is all speculation, even on his part. But I would not be shocked to see the government really sink the hooks in here. The question is... What does she have to bring to the table to make the government want to play ball? If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I will be back tomorrow morning, and we will see what this case holds for us then. Have a great night, everyone. It's okay that you don't want to be first to get the COVID-19 vaccine. You aren't. It's okay to have questions. Everyone deserves answers. It's okay to hate needles but love Band-Aids. It's fine to do it because your kid misses her soccer team like nothing else. Let's get you there. Let's get to immunity. Learn more at VaccinateAll58.com or call 833-422-4255. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Summer's here, it's time to grill and chill. And Stater Brothers Market's full-service meat counter has all the best cuts, quality, and selection. And when you're done grilling, chill with ice-cold drinks, fresh-cut fruit, and dessert. Grill and chill all summer long with Stater Brothers Market's.